When you see someone who has a lot of knowledge, they learned it over time. When you see someone who has a lot of skill, they developed it over time. When you see someone who has got a lot done, they accomplished it over time. When you see someone who has earned a lot of money, they earned it over time. The key is over time. Success is built sequentially. It's one thing at a time. Welcome to Philosopher Insights, the podcast that delivers wisdom in minutes a day that you can put into practice daily and strive to master over a lifetime. The podcast committed to sharing ideas that encourage you to bridge the gap between who you are today and the person you aspire to be in the future. Hi, my name is Herb Lamba and welcome to my podcast where I will share practical insights from the world's best authors. Knowledge isn't power, applied knowledge is. The quest to become the best version of you starts right now. Hi, and welcome to Philosopher Insights. My name is Herb Lamba. Today we're talking about the one thing, the surprisingly simple truth behind extraordinary results. The author of the book is Gary Keller, and this book is published back in 2012. I want to share a number of my favorite insights, starting with the domino effect, a success list, disciplines into habits, the focusing question, and finish it off with time blocking. So let's start with the introduction. Quote, If everyone has the same number of hours in the day, why do some people seem to get so much more done than others? How do they do more, achieve more, earn more, have more? If time is the currency of achievement, then why are some able to cash in their allotment for more chips than others? The answer is they make getting to the heart of things the heart of their approach. They go small. When you want the absolute best chance to succeed at anything you want, your approach should always be the same. Go small. Going small is ignoring all the things you could do and doing what you should do. It's recognizing that not all things matter equally and finding the things that matter most. It's a tighter way to connect what you do with what you want. It's realizing that extraordinary results are directly determined by how narrow you can make your focus. End quote. That's from the introductory chapter of this amazing book, one of my favorites of all time. I thoroughly enjoyed the book, and I am honored to be able to share some of my favorite insights with you. So let's begin. Insight number one, the domino effect. Quote, when one thing, the right thing, is set in motion, it can topple many things. End quote. The author shares the 1983 American Journal of Physics publication by Lauren Whitehead, where he outlined how a single domino is capable of bringing down another domino that is 50% larger. If you start with a two-inch domino, the tenth domino would be as tall as retired NFL quarterback Peyton Manning. The eighteenth domino would rival the Leaning Tower of Pisa. The thirty-first domino would loom over Mount Everest, and the fifty-seventh domino would equate to the distance between the Earth and the Moon. Quote, Getting extraordinary results is all about creating a domino effect in your life. End quote. He goes on to say, quote, Toppling dominoes is pretty straightforward. You line them up and tip over the first one. In the real world, though, it's a bit more complicated. The challenge is that life doesn't line everything up for us and say, here's where you should start. Highly successful people know this. So every day, they line up their priorities anew, find the lead domino, and whack away at it until it falls. End quote. That is such a huge insight and one that can be applied to the major goals in your life or the smallest moments of every day where you are trying to decide what you need to do next. Quote, When you see someone who has a lot of knowledge, they learned it over time. When you see someone who has a lot of skill, they developed it over time. When you see someone who has got a lot done, they accomplished it over time. When you see someone who has earned a lot of money, they earned it over time. The key is over time. Success is built sequentially. It's one thing at a time. End quote. Now that's pure gold. Although it's common sense, it's often overlooked by the majority of people. Success is built sequentially over time, so let's stop living in a fantasy world where we are looking for the easy button to magically vault us to our dreams. Insight number two, create a success list. Quote, while to-dos serve as a useful collection of our best intentions, they also tyrannize us with trivial, unimportant stuff that we feel obligated to get done because it's on our list, end quote. The commonly accepted time management taskmaster, the dreaded to-do list. The challenge with the to-do list is everything matters equally. 
As former Australian Prime Minister Bob Hawke noted, the things which are most important don't always scream the loudest. A lengthy to-do list creates time management problems for most people because the lists are often long and full of trivial, unimportant actions that result in complete overwhelm. To-do lists lack the intent of success. Quote, Achievers operate differently. They have an eye for the essential. They pause just long enough to decide what matters and then allow what matters to drive the day. Achievers do sooner what others plan to do later and defer, perhaps indefinitely, what others do sooner. The difference isn't in intent, but in right of way. Achievers always work from a clear sense of priority. End quote. How interesting. Achievers do sooner what others plan to do later. Wow. I believe a powerful success secret is embedded in this simple statement. The question is how do we get ourselves to focus on the priorities and stop engaging in the feel-good activity of checking items off our to-do list? The author suggests that the answer lies in a success list. Quote, to-do lists tend to be long. Success lists are short. One pulls you in all directions. The other aims you in a specific direction. One is a disorganized directory and the other is an organized directive. If a list isn't built around success, then that's not where it takes you. If your to-do list contains everything, then it's probably taking you everywhere but where you want to go. End quote. Now that reminds me of another great book, The 80-20 Principle, where author Richard Koch says, quote, The 80-20 Principle asserts that a minority of causes, inputs, or effort usually lead to a majority of the results, outputs, or rewards, end quote. Insight number three, turn disciplines into habits. Quote, discipline and habit. Honestly, most people never really want to talk about these. And who can blame them? I don't either. The images these words conjure in our heads are of something hard and unpleasant. Just reading the words is exhausting. But there's good news. The right discipline goes a long way, and habits are hard only in the beginning, end quote. There is something liberating about learning to stick with disciplines long enough to convert them into habits in your life. Once you figure out how to lock in a keystone habit into your life, you can ride the routine with less wear and tear on yourself. The latest research suggests that you need to stick with a discipline for 66 days before it truly becomes a habit. I remember using this a couple years ago to establish the habit of waking up at 5 a.m. every morning to run through my morning priorities of reading, exercise, and meditation. We don't need to live our entire lives struggling to live with discipline. That is admittedly way too hard. However, we can live our lives leveraging the power of disciplines that were converted into habits, which now serve your daily life on autopilot. One of my favorite quotes of all time is this one by F.M. Alexander. Quote, People don't decide their futures. They decide their habits, and their habits decide their futures. End quote. Don't choose to be a person of discipline. Be a person of habits and start the journey by building one powerful new habit at a time. What new habit could you install in your life today? Insight number four, the focusing question. Quote, most people are familiar with the Chinese proverb, a journey of a thousand miles must begin with a single step. They just never fully appreciate that if that is true, then the wrong first step begins a journey that could end up as far as 2,000 miles from where they want to be. The focusing question helps keep your first step from being a misstep, end quote. This passage is both funny and depressing at the same time. Taking the wrong first step could put you 2,000 miles further away from where you want to be. The solution to avoiding this is the focusing question, because your life's answers will come from asking questions. Ask better questions every day, and you will receive better answers to help guide you on this journey. As Sir Francis Bacon said, Quote, a prudent question is one half of wisdom, end quote. Quote, anyone who dreams of an uncommon life eventually discovers there is no choice but to seek an uncommon approach to living it. The focusing question is that uncommon approach. In a world of no instructions, it becomes the simple formula for finding exceptional answers that lead to extraordinary results, end quote. So what is that focusing question? Quote, what's the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary, end quote. Once again, what's the one thing I can do, such that by doing it, everything else will become easier or unnecessary? 
a simple yet powerful question that can help answer big picture questions and the small focus ones as well. It shows you how big life could be and the small steps that you need to take now to reach that life. The focusing question doesn't focus on what is doable. It tackles what is necessary. In the book, the authors break down the anatomy of the question, but for now, I urge you to ask this question to help define your big picture and at the same time, bring clarity to the small focus task that you need to do today. Next insight, time blocking. Quote, most people think there's not enough time to be successful, but there is when you time block it. Time blocking is a very results-oriented way of viewing and using time. It's a way of making sure that what has to get done gets done. Alexander Graham Bell said, Concentrate all your thoughts upon the work at hand. The sun's rays do not burn until brought to a focus. Time blocking harnesses your energy and centers it on your most important work. It's productivity's greatest power tool, end quote. To be honest, until I read this book, I had no idea the productivity power that time blocking could bring to my day. It is, without question, the fastest and easiest way to create the most productive day in a way that is repeatable every day for the rest of your life. It all starts by blocking off time in your calendar for the most important work, your one thing. Please, do not hesitate here. Open up your daily agenda and block off 30 to 60 minutes tomorrow to commit to your number one priority. During your time block, you accept no distractions, no emails, no social media, no phone calls, no friends or family interruptions. Nothing outside of an emergency should be permitted to disrupt the sacred block of time. Cal Newport echoes this wisdom in his great book, Deep Work. He refers to deep work sessions as, quote, professional activities performed in a state of distraction-free concentration that push your cognitive capabilities to their limit. These efforts create new value, improve your skill, and are hard to replicate, end quote. I'm obsessed at this point with the power of time blocking or deep work sessions where you focus on your number one priority for a predetermined period of time every day. Quote, Time blocking works on the premise that a calendar records appointments, but doesn't care who those appointments are with. So, when you know your one thing, make an appointment with yourself to tackle it. End quote. Please don't listen to this and move on to something else. This skill is considered by many to be the superpower of the 21st century. Those that can focus, put their attention where they want, when they want, will thrive to extraordinary heights in life. Quote, if you try to do everything, you could wind up with nothing. If you try to do just one thing, the right one thing, you could wind up with everything you ever wanted. The one thing is real. If you put it to work, it will work. So don't delay. Ask yourself the question. What is the one thing I can do right now to start using the one thing in my life, such that by doing it, everything else will become easier or unnecessary? And make doing the answer your first one thing. End quote. I could not agree more. You now have the knowledge. Applying it could take you from ordinary to extraordinary, and as with everything in life, the choice is yours. That concludes the quick insights I wanted to share from this incredible book. If the insights shared here resonate with you, please don't hesitate to read or listen to this book. I would highly recommend this book, and I would also suggest you check out their website, www.theonething.com, with the number one in the URL because they have a lot of free resources to help you manage your time. You've been listening to Philosopher Insights with your host, Herb Lamba. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. To go deeper with me, you can register for free at www.philosopherinsights.com for instant access to a growing library of Philosopher Insights, which are 8 to 10 page PDFs plus 20-minute MP3s that break down my favorite insights from the world's best personal development books. To catch all the latest from me, you can follow me on Facebook at Optimal Herb. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.